My boyfriend and I have been dating for about two years. About a year and a half into the relationship, I was introduced to his family. I met his mother, father, and older brother. His older brother and I are very alike. We both studied in the same field, so we became really good friends. His father seemed approving of us, but his mother was a complete psycho from day one. I gave her the benefit of the doubt, assuming she was protective of her younger son, but it was pretty sinister. She would find ways to subtly make me look bad, emphasize my every flaw, and she was the cause of many arguments, which she probably intentionally did. She would tell my boyfriend rumors and untrue things about me, and I had enough. My boyfriend told her to stop multiple times, but most of it was when he was away, so I had to deal with it. After a small text message argument, I decided to call her and end this game of cat and mouse once and for all. I told her to tell me what she had in her mind right now, or to leave me alone forever. She told me that she wanted me to not be with her younger son, and that she wanted me to be with her older son, my boyfriend's brother, because we were a superior match. She started talking about her son, my boyfriend's brother, trying to be a matchmaker. What? I'm literally her son's girlfriend, and she's trying to make me break up with her son to date her other son. Not only can't I comprehend her logic, but I can't think of what to do. Should I tell my boyfriend his mother's crazy agenda? I feel like that would be very hurtful, but would it be more hurtful if I just never told him? What should I do? Okay, this is insane. You need to tell your boyfriend immediately. His mother is not looking out for his interests. Now that you're aware of the plan, you can anticipate her moves and you should elect to completely ignore her. Shut her down. Tell her that your boyfriend loves you and that the other son must find his own partner. I'm so sorry for your boyfriend. His family are scheming against him. Update My boyfriend and I had a discussion. I told him what she said. He believed me because he said that growing up, his brother was the family favorite. So while he was disappointed, he wasn't too surprised. Apparently his mother has betrayed him for his brother many times before, which is horrifying and sad. He called his mother, who at first denied everything, but then told the truth. And we are not going to see them for a long time, maybe forever. It was a big phone call, and she really showed her true colors there. She is completely insane. He said that this was the last straw, and that his brother and mother were too toxic for him, and me. We changed the locks and cut all contacts from his side of the family, but he kept his father's contact, and his father is pretty much our inside man. His father told us that apparently his brother took an interest in me, and his mother wanted her little boy to have everything, which is insulting to my boyfriend because his mother literally chose someone over him, and to me because I'm just a thing he wants. Either way, more evidence to why cutting contact is beneficial for all. I'm not humble bragging. In fact, I'm probably a gigantic idiot. Possibly a D-bag. When I was in college, I was the very stereotypical guy everyone hates. Total jock frat boy. Wouldn't date girls who weren't hot enough. And I probably said some awful things to girls I didn't feel were good enough for me. Hat on backwards. Team t-shirt. Khakis. Daddy paying for all this a-hole. Yeah, I sucked. I mean, I was young. And if you're going to suck, your youth is the time to do it, I guess. But I'm still not proud of who I was then. I never did anything really bad like forced anyone to do anything they didn't want to do or wasn't able to say no to. I was just a garden variety a-hole. Met my now wife senior year. Of course, she was a cheerleader. She was beautiful and she still is. Kinda looked like Barbie then. Looks like Barbie's older sister now. I dated her because she was hot and liked to hook up. Somewhere along the line, I thought I loved her, I guess. We got married and had some kids. I don't know when these thoughts started creeping into my head, but karma sure got me good. Went to a good school, got a good job, got my wife a good job, and we're definitely upper middle class. We have a lot of nice things, but I'm miserable. I don't think I love my wife. I'm not sure if I even like her. She hasn't changed. I'm not putting any of this on her, but she isn't right for me, I don't think. Her face is spackled in makeup 24-7. I hug her makeup. I kiss her, makeup. She lays on my shoulder, makeup. She picks the kids up and holds them, makeup. We have to throw out bed sheets because of makeup. Getting ready to go anywhere takes six hours because makeup. Have S, makeup. I've tried to hint at her toning it down, but she won't. I've said things like, babe, we're just going to the kids game, 
The queen won't be there. Let's go. But no. Makeup. And it's not cheap makeup. Not by a long shot. Every time I look at her face, all I see is money. Not that she can't wear it or have it as a hobby, but it's an addiction. She comes home at least once a week with bags and bags of makeup, when everything she has is only used once. The other thing is S. We have it, but I don't like it. She always has to make an event out of it. She always has to put on garters and lingerie and seduce me, and sometimes I just want lazy morning S. Yes, I'm complaining about a hot woman who dresses in lingerie because it's exhausting. I can't just jump on her when I come home. We can't be cuddling watching a movie and something starts naturally. It feels fake and I'm stuck in a porno. I've asked her to tone that down too or maybe just do it less, but no, I was rejecting her. She treats our kids like dolls, always in expensive clothes and they don't dare get dirty and our daughter is already wearing, you guessed it, makeup. I do not want her teaching our children that all that matters is image and beauty, and we had a pretty big fight about it. I feel like I'm in someone else's life. It was ducking great in my 20s, the high-class parties and fast cars and keeping up with the Joneses, but I've grown up I guess, and she's still a college cheerleader. I know I sound like a huge piece of crap and maybe I am, but I just want some damn substance in my life and my relationship. I want to take a vacation that isn't Instagram fodder. I want to make love to my wife. I want to roughhouse with my kids and dogs. That's another thing. We have three Italian greyhounds. The kids can't play with them like you play with dogs, because if you look at an Italian wrong, it breaks a leg. I want a big, fluffy, slobbering, loving mutt the kids can hug and wrestle with and play fetch with, and we can take to the dog park, not these designer class dogs. The kids found a kitten in the yard who, I never told them this, was very probably the last survivor of a neighborhood Siamese mixed stray. They wanted to keep her, but the wife said no because we should get a purebred Siamese if we were going to have a cat. It was a cute kitten and seemed especially fond of my son. Nothing wrong with it except mixed parentage. I know I can't change my wife, and she has what I wanted 10 years ago, but I've changed and developed depth, and she hasn't. Maybe I've gotten what I deserved, but I guess what I'm asking is, can we develop that together, or should I just move on? Marital Counseling ASAP Perhaps your wife is feeling trapped as well. Perhaps she feels like she has to be perfect 24-7, or her whole life will fall apart. Honestly, after the kitten story, it does sound like you grew up and now you two are on different worlds. Everyone deserves to live an authentic life. Shallow, appearance-centered worlds are not healthy for children. Give your marriage a huge effort to save, but don't sacrifice your future for the D-bag you used to be. And put your damn foot down as a father. That eight-year-old is just too young for makeup. You at least need to talk to her about this. Maybe she's worried about getting older and is just trying to keep up appearances for you. Maybe she thinks Ken is still a douche who will dump Barbie if she gets less hot. If she thought those things, that's not surprising because you say that's who you used to be. My, 34 male, nieces, 11 female. Dad is my older brother, 35 male. He left my niece's mom, 35 female, after my niece turned one and divorced her, and my nieces started asking me questions about it and why my brother left. My niece's mom was born with a liver condition and a heart condition. Pregnancy was a nightmare for her. I mean, my niece was loved and wanted, but her mom did not enjoy pregnancy. She barely gained any weight because she was always sick. She had kidney stones and heartburn and went weeks without sleeping because of how miserable it was. She spent most of the pregnancy in the hospital. Due to her heart condition, she was going to have a planned C-section because a regular birth would have meant likely death for her and the baby. She ended up going into labor 23 days before her planned C-section. Thankfully, she was in the hospital, so they could do an emergency C-section because she had already started going into distress from the natural labor. Thankfully, they got the C-section done. My niece was born healthy and okay, and her mom recovered fully. After that, her mom decided she never wanted to be pregnant again. Her doctors recommended the same thing. Since she could not take any form of hormonal control or IUD due to her liver condition, the doctors recommended a tubal. My brother initially was supportive, but not long after, he started getting upset because he always imagined himself with a big family with many children. 
Surrogacy or adoption was not affordable for them, and even though my brother acknowledged how terrible the pregnancy was and what the doctors all recommended, he was still upset. He ended up leaving and filing for divorce just after my niece turned one because he said he couldn't imagine not having more kids. His wife was told her pregnancy would be medium to high risk her whole life, but until she actually got pregnant, the doctor said no one would know how bad it was. No one blames her for not wanting to get pregnant again. He married a different woman a month after the divorce was final. At the time, she had a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and one-year-old twins. He adopted all her kids, and they planned to have more. But karma kicked him, because he found out he was infertile. But he is still married to that woman and his father to her kids. He barely talks to our family and never comes to any family events or holidays because he is always with her, her family, and their kids. The only time any of us had met them was at the wedding. He occasionally calls my parents, and for the most part, that is it. He sees his daughter for two Sundays a month and didn't even try to get shared custody or visitation. He also didn't try to get decision-type custody about things like where she goes to school and stuff. So, he can't even pick her up from school or make any kind of decision about her medical care. Meanwhile, he does all this stuff for the kids he adopted. He doesn't see my niece on holidays or get her gifts for things like Christmas or her birthday. Her mom used to get stuff and say it was from her dad, and our family would help with that. But my niece caught on, and she said she knew it was not really from him. For the record, I think my brother is a grade-A a-hole for divorcing his wife and leaving his wife and daughter just to run off and make a new family with someone else. It would have been different if there were problems in the marriage or something, but my brother told everyone and said in court it was only because he wanted more kids. I wouldn't even feel this way if he had not essentially abandoned my niece. He sees her for a few hours two Sundays a month, but otherwise doesn't visit, see her on holidays, come to school events, etc. He doesn't even bring her around the other kids he adopted, and she has never met them before and has only seen his wife in passing and not met her. My niece's mom is a great person. She still keeps in touch with my family, comes to holidays, family events, and weddings sometimes, and doesn't badmouth my brother. Even though he is barely around, she encourages her daughter to spend time with him. We helped her out with babysitting and groceries when my niece was younger, and there were no problems between her and our family. She considers herself part of our family still, and vice versa. Her family has been good to us at events like my niece's birthday when everyone comes together. She has not remarried or had a boyfriend since my brother left, but everyone would be happy for her if she just decided to have one. My niece told me my brother actually told her that if her mom was going to marry a new guy, he, my brother, would be okay with that guy adopting my niece. I don't even know what to say to that. My niece and I both love sports, so I'll take her to games or out to watch them or to play. We spend lots of time together. Lately, she's been asking about her dad and why he left. I tried asking her what her mom says, but my niece says her mom just says things didn't work out, but she knows there's more to it. I don't know what to tell her. I don't want to upset her, even if my brother is a jerk. I also don't want her to think her only worth is having kids and men won't want her if she doesn't want kids or can't have them. Also, I don't want to scare her about her mom. Her mom isn't on any medication and doesn't need any treatment or doctor's appointments for her liver and heart, besides once a year for a checkup. I don't want her to get the wrong idea and think her mom is sick or something, just because the pregnancy was bad. I am also not sure about talking to her mom about it, because I know it is a sore spot for her. It really hurt her when my brother left and she still hurts over it because she really loved him. I have never been married and I don't have kids. I have a girlfriend where things are getting serious, but I don't live with her yet. I have no idea what to tell my niece without making things bad or upsetting her or her mom. What should I do here? No offense, but your brother is a scumbag. I would talk to her mom about this before you tell her anything. Not in depth if that is uncomfortable for her, but in general. When niece asks questions, what amount of information are you comfortable with me giving her? What I can tell you is that you should tell her that she is loved that her mom and your family will never abandon her, and that you don't approve of your brother's behavior. Dude, your brother didn't leave because of wanting more kids. That was just an excuse because he had been cheating on his wife during that horrible pregnancy. As for your niece, tell your sister-in-law that she needs to get her daughter more support and information. My ex and I were together for 11 years, and I caught her cheating on me. She had been sexting multiple guys. 
She cried and promised she would never talk to them again, and I forgave her. A whole year went by after that, and I found that she was cheating on me again. Over the next year and a half, we would talk to each other sometimes. I would never ask about Peter because I didn't care, because it was none of my business. All I knew is that he lived in New Jersey and that we lived in Rhode Island. Oh, I forgot to mention that he is married and was cheating on his wife with my ex. My ex was my best friend, and so it was very hard when she left because I had no one really to talk to that knew me. But during that time, I picked myself up and got my own place, made new friends, and got into a really good spot in life again. So my ex calls me up yesterday crying. She told me for the past six years or so that she has been depressed and says she wants to give up. I guess Peter only comes by once a month, and every time he does, he's just a prick. She has lived her life around his schedule apparently for the whole time. They've gone from talking every day to now talking once or twice a week. My ex seems to think that Peter wants to get back with his ex-wife. Peter has now blocked her on everything and will not return any of her messages. Should I really give a crap about what these two are going through? These two crap bags took everything from me. My life, my home, my pets. I'm not the kind of person to turn somebody down when they're in trouble because I have a big heart and that usually gets me pushed over. I care enough about her to not want her to hurt herself. I don't believe in karma, but absolutely, you should tell her to kick rocks. Or if you prefer, totally ignore and block. Personally, I prefer the ignore method, best for you and totally infuriating for the entitled ex. It's a mystery why you are still in contact with this person.